Hello everyone and welcome back to part 2 of Surviving 100 Days in Don't Starve. If you've not watched part 1 then the link will be in the description as well as this card in the top right corner of the screen but let's get straight back into where we left off. For day 50 I was going to recover from the fire from the last video so I made another chest and started placing everything back inside the chest where it belonged. I made some food and sorted out my inventory and then finally created a lantern. A lantern is what was made from the light bulbs from the last video under the cave. And the lantern is essentially just a better light source that can also be dropped allowing you to do things in the dark whilst not having to have a torch equipped. And for the night of day 50 I needed some more mushrooms since my sanity was low so I went picking some mushrooms as well as just some flowers just to increase my sanity. And for day 51 I finally enacted my plan to get some manure. So feeding a pig for monster meat will turn it into a were pig. Were pigs also can come out on full moons but this is a controlled method of doing so. And every one food item that a were pig will eat, it will generate one manure. Since light bulbs are classed as a food item and they are very cheap and mass producible, I was able to give all of my light bulbs to the were pig in return for manure. After I got all the manure I needed, I killed the were pig as well as just collected some berries before returning to my base. My bird trapper trapped a bird whilst I was gone, but I was feeling very generous today since the fridge was full, so I let the bird go and it decided to do this little dance, I guess you could say, to celebrate its freedom. And after sorting out my inventory, I decided that I needed to clean up my base a little bit more. I started by making the umbrella to help me during the spring season. The umbrella is a head slot item and it will have 100% negation against any rain. This means that I will not get any water dog while wearing it and unlike the umbrella which has to be held in your hand it would allow me to do things whilst not having to worry about the rain. I made another chest so I can finally start cleaning up around my base as I did just have a lot of things laying around on the floor and I finally wrapped up day 52 by sorting out my inventory and making some food. Now unfortunately for some reason an entire stream didn't save to my VODs so I'm missing from day 53 to day 65. That is a lot of days missing from this 100 day survival challenge, so I'm gonna do my best to sum up what we did. Starting off with the base upgrades, I'm standing next to an endothermic fire, and an endothermic fire is essentially the opposite of a normal fire, so it will actually cool you down standing near it, which is great for summertime. I also built an extra fridge as well as two extra farms. So you might notice that there's a rock lobster next to the base, and basically when we opened up the caves, this opened up all the cave creatures to come to the overworld. This means that we have bats now roaming around the world as well as rock lobsters but the rock lobsters are very useful because I can give them a rock and they will follow me and help me in combat. We'll be returning to the cave later on in this run so I'll better explain what we did during the time that the footage is missing from. I spent the start of day 66 sorting out my inventory since I need to empty all of the stuff I got from the cave into the chests. I also was very low on health and sanity so I cooked up some food just to restore all of my stats back to full. And for the night time of day 66 I wanted to duplicate some of my dragon fruit just to have a constant supply of it because it is one of our main healing food but whilst doing this a tree off in the distance started to smolder and smoldering is basically warning you that it's going to set on fire but there isn't a way to put out a tree that I know of that isn't within the range of an ice flingomatic so I tried chopping it down but whilst doing this because it was night time I ended up getting attacked by Charlie and basically if you get caught out in the dark too long you will get attacked by a entity called Charlie and it does a lot of damage as you can see so panicking I didn't really know what to do and ended up losing all of my trees that I planted because they all burnt down so I spent the first half of day 67 just making more healing food to regain my health back to full again. And whilst making some food, I heard a growl in the distance, but this was no normal growl. This was not the normal dog attack. And my character said it sounded like a big mean monster man. So this could only mean one thing. Oh, because we need a... Oh, that's dragonfly, I think. Dragonfly. This is indicating to me that Dragonfly is about to spawn in. As mentioned in my last video, there are four seasonal bosses to Don't Starve, and since we're in the summer season, that means the seasonal boss will be Dragonfly. Now, not wanting Dragonfly to spawn in my base, I ran away to the swamp biome. I was kind of panicked, so I didn't really know where to go, just so he wouldn't spawn near me and set my entire base on fire. And he spawned in the swamp, and the frogs started to attack him, and this gave me a bit of hope that, you know, the frogs could weaken him, but no, the frogs didn't really stand a chance. And Dragonfly actually killed a tentacle spike in one hit 
and that caused it to drop a weapon which is the tentacle spike weapon which is actually a very good weapon so there was a positive from bringing him to the swamp because I got a free weapon out of it. Dragonfly is pretty neutral as long as you keep your distance from him. He just goes around setting things on fire and eating the ash that he spawned from them so I set up a endothermic fire next to him just because I didn't want him to despawn by going to a different area but when it all seemed to be going well Dragonfly decided that he wanted to attack me so I had no option but to fight him. Now I was quite cocky with how the deer crops fight went in winter because it was actually a very easy fight minus the sanity drain and dragonfly doesn't have a sanity drain so i thought this boss was going to be easy doing my usual hit the boss run away repeat method but dragonfly is a bit unique as he has an enraged mode and this happened <laughs> oh my god i'm good i've got respawn points but and a dog attack. Oh my god, dude. So Dragonfly decided to insta-kill me as my health literally went from half to empty within a millisecond. But luckily, because of my touchstones, I respawned and had a second chance. However, as I respawned, it just so happened to be a dog attack. So day 69 was spent running for my life from dogs. Now luckily the touchstone was near the wormhole, which led to my private island, which was in the first video. So my plan was to run to that wormhole and get to this safety of the island. But because it was summer, I was beginning to overheat very quickly and take tick damage. And a dog just so managed to bite me before making it into the wormhole, so I died again. After respawning for a second time on my final respawn, I was pretty much ready to give up. Dude, that is crazy how it can all just end like that. Like, that is crazy. Like, we were just fine. I was looking at the map and considering all options and what the best choice was to do. And at this point, I was very convinced that the run was over in day 70. Luckily again, the second respawn point was near another wormhole, which brought me closer to my base. So I was trying to avoid the heat. I ran to this wormhole so I could teleport and have a better chance of making it to my base before I overheated and died. And my health was ticking down. So it was literally a race for my life. I found my dead body where I died to dragonfly. So my plan was to pick up my resources to make a endothermic fire to cool myself down. But as I picked up the resources, I had no grass to make said fire. And I also it's my eyebrella. Now the eye breader gives you protection against the heat in summer but not 100% like it does with rain so I was still overheating but I remembered that standing underneath the tree will also give you protection from the heat so with 4 HP left I just managed to survive. Oh dude, tree, tree, tree. Oh my god. However, it seemed that Willow really just wanted me to die because she set the tree on fire, which would have increased my temperature and killed me. So I had to run to a second smaller tree. And right then I made the decision to make one last final push to make it to my endothermic fire at my base. And I just do it by the thinnest amount of time. And luckily I had some pierogi sat in my crock pot ready. I'm not sure when I made it and why I left it, but this actually restored my health by 40. So he gave me a better chance of not being one shot by anything and I spent the rest of day 70 frantically picking flowers to increase my sanity so Willow would not burn down my base again as well as trying to get a piece of fruit from the farms to make pierogi to heal my health just a little bit more. Now although I survived this ordeal when in reality I really should have died I now had to get the basics right again because I had no respawn points and I had been set all the way back to square one. I had no food and no resources so all of day 71 was just spent collecting basic resources like twigs, wood and food because I just needed to focus on pure survival right now. I started day 72 by going paying the pig king a visit to go collect some berries from his berry bushes as well as kill some turkeys for some meat. And after stealing the berries from the berry bushes in the pig king's village, I came across another one of them eye creature things from earlier on. This one spawned within the fields near my house so I just went straight for the bulb in the middle to destroy it and get rid of all the eyeballs. And the night of day 72 I made some more food just to get my health up to full as well as making a log armour just so I had a bit of armour for protection. So in day 73, I was running really low on twigs and during summer, things don't really grow. So it got to the point where I actually went to the swamp to collect some twigs by chopping down the trees and picking the spiky bushes. The trees give you twigs, but only one and the spiky bushes damages you for picking it. But this is how desperate I was to get some. And then in the evening of day 73, I went and collecting some wood. And whilst collecting some wood, something very weird happened. 
Oh, what are you? What are you? What? What is this now? Oh, they're easy. So I'm not really sure why or what this thing is, but I think I angered the Lorax because a angry tree spawned with these little nuts that were following me and making a sound. I'm, I'm not too sure, but I chopped down the tree and it gave me some living logs, so I couldn't really complain. And the nighttime of day 73 was another full moon, and at this point I was still in denial about there not being a Gloma statue, so I spent it just looking in the map of any parts that I missed out. For day 74, I returned to my base to drop off my inventory, and then I went to go collect some grass and twigs because I was just so low on it and desperate. I made a backpack as well to replace the one that I'd just lost. And close to the night of day 74, I went up to the pig village near the swamp at the top of the map and decided that these pigs could do with some house sharing. However, camera was due because the night time of day 74 was a full moon, so the pigs turned into were pigs and tried to attack and kill me, but I fully deserved it. And the start of day 75 was spent stealing their berry bushes as well as destroying some more houses. I returned to my base and planted all of the berry bushes I just stole, which is kind of a messed up move, but I really needed this food. And the rest of day 75 was spent fertilising my newly acquired berry bushes as well as just making some food throughout the night. Now at this point I really wanted to make a second respawn point for myself so if I died I just had that insurance of the world wasn't going to end. And you can actually do this by crafting a respawn point but it's not very cheap, it's actually very expensive. So what I need to do first was get beard hair and as Willow she can't grow beard, in fact Wilson is the only one that I know of that can. So what I had to do was collect loads of rabbits and go inside saying whilst holding them to turn them into these little nightmare rabbits and when you murder them there's a chance that they will drop beard hair. So I spent all of day 76 just trying to round up as many rabbits as I can as well as the night time collecting some grass just to top up my resources whilst I was waiting. And for day 77 I built this little safety enclosure for my second respawn point so if I did die I had safety to respawn in so I wouldn't instantly die again as well as just leaving some supplies on the ground like armour and a weapon. And then the evening and night time of day 77 was spent collecting some green mushrooms as I needed to make myself go insane to get the beard hair so I needed something to return my sanity once I was done. Now day 78 started out with the barking of a dog attack but I was so determined to get this beard hair that I kind of just ignored it and focused on trying to make myself insane and when trying to think of ways to do it I remembered that there was all these evil flowers right next to the pig king. Now evil flowers will lower your sanity when standing near them but by picking them and eating them it lowers your sanity by quite a bit so I I picked quite a lot of these evil flowers and then once the rabbits turned into these little shadow rabbit creatures I murdered them to try and get as much beard hair as possible. So after getting two beard hair I got attacked by so many dogs. But as mentioned earlier, these rock lobsters come in so much handy because just by giving them one single rock, they will fight for you. So I use these rock lobsters to basically act as bodyguards and protect me against the dog attack. After the dog attack, I returned to my base to drop my inventory off and this rock lobster was really taking the role of security a bit too serious as he just started murdering frogs within the base area. And as I said earlier, after my two deaths, a lot of the time was just spent getting the basics right. So I really did just spend a lot of the days just getting food and supplies and basically just get into a stable state again before doing any more exploring. So the rest of day 78 was just spent dropping off my inventory and sorting it all out into the chests and making some more food as well as collecting some more twigs. I started day 79 by collecting some wood and grass before later on in the evening making my first magic machine. It isn't called that but it basically makes magic and it's hard to pronounce. This machine is essentially like the alchemy engine but it's all about magic. So this is how you make all the magical stuff in the game which is including our respawn point. And before day 79 ended I went and replanted some trees since the last ones burnt down. And day 80 I was on a rabbit spree again. I spent all of day 80 just trying to catch rabbits and then once I had four I went and made myself insane again to try and get more beard hair and not a single one dropped it. So I was insane and I didn't really have any way of coming back to sanity apart from sleeping so I returned to my base to sleep in my tent to restore my sanity and skip the rest of the night. And day 81 was no different, I really wanted these rabbits. 
Now I decided to spend the night keeping myself insane so I didn't have to constantly keep going insane and out of insanity just because it was starting to get costly to do so. So I spent the night away from my base so I wouldn't burn it down for a third time and spent it near these pigs and they were not happy with me being there so I quickly sent them on their way. And on day 82 my rabbit spree was finally over as I got the last piece of beard hair that I needed. I made myself sane again and went to go pay the pig king a visit. I was trying to clean up my base a bit more so I just went and gave him some old stuff to trade for gold. And I finished up day 82 by digging up some more grass and planting it near my base just so I had more grass supply. So summer was definitely over by now, I was no longer overheating and things weren't setting on fire. So we were now in the autumn season which is definitely the best and easiest season to survive in as you don't really have any of the elements against you since winter has freezing, spring has rain and summer has heat. Autumn just doesn't have anything so it's definitely the nicest season. And on day 83 I needed to collect some wood. I went and destroyed these little pig totems since the pigs and all of their grass is no longer here and it actually gave me wood and manure for destroying these statues so I'm not too sure what to think about that. And now I needed some cooked meat to make my next respawn point so for this I went to the pig village as I needed to kill one of the pigs to get their meat. So I was able to lure one of the pigs away from the village and kill him for his meat. I returned to base and made the meat effigy however I didn't place it down yet. I'm not too sure why I didn't but I just didn't do it on this day. And I also made an ice staff as well because the ice staff is very useful for things like boss fights as it allows you to freeze bosses to get a breather into heal and I started day 84 by fertilizing some dragon fruit to make some healing food. So at this point in the run I was pretty stable again and got all the basics down so I was getting ready to go back into the cave to find the ancient guardian. The ancient guardian is one of the bosses in the game that isn't seasonal it's just always there so technically it can be seen as the last boss of the game as there are five in this version of don't starve. So in order to do that I needed to basically prepare for that fight because it is a very difficult fight so I wanted to make sure I was fully prepared so I wanted to have some backup log armor to bring with me into the fight so the evening of day 84 was spent chopping down some trees and making some armor. I spent the night of day 84 camped next to this little bird on a little crashed ship and this is actually how you can access the other DLCs with the same character so you don't have to create a completely separate world for it. However I didn't intend to do that on Willow because after she burned down my base twice I did not want to go into any DLCs with her so I destroyed the boat just for the resources. And then I returned to base and spent all of day 85 just cooking food. I also made two drying racks to dry out meat because when you dry out meat you can turn it into jerky and jerky is a very good food because it restores your sanity as well as has a long shelf life. Yeah, again I wanted to make sure I was fully prepared to go into these caves so pretty much all of these days up until going into the cave was just spent preparing for this. And the morning of day 86 I heard a all too familiar growl. Uh, Insert pack can be made from beige above. Well here he is. <laughs> <laughs> Here he is. Uh, my weapon might break. I don't have a lot of durability on it, but I, I don't want to spawn near our base. I now, because it's autumn season, that means that the autumn boss to spawn is Badger. I ran away from my base so Badger wouldn't spawn near my base and potentially destroy it. It turns out that Badger ended up spawning next to the cave and was fighting the rock lobsters, but they didn't really stand a chance against a boss. Once they've taken enough damage, they'll turn into this rock form and basically take a lot less damage and hide. So I decided that I owed the favour to my rocky friends and engaged with Badger. Now, all of my weapons were very close to breaking at this point. So during the fight, my tentacle spike broke and then I had to use my backup spear, which happened to have a 19% on its durability. And once my spear broke, I had to resort to my golden axe. But with one swing of my golden axe, Berger dies. And surprisingly, Berger was actually the easiest boss fight so far. Now, Moose Goose, which is the spring boss fight, I never got to fight because he didn't spawn in for some reason during spring season. But out of the three bosses I did fight out of the seasonal ones, Berger was definitely the easiest because he had a very simple attack pattern. It was just hit and run. And he also had a sanity drain, but nowhere near as intense as the winter boss fight is. On top of that, you're not dealing with freezing to death or overheating as well, so it's just a very easy fight. However, my celebration was short-lived as there was this really weird sound in my ear. Yeah, I'm not really sure what's going on here, so I just decided to leave it as I did not want to get involved in whatever that is. 
And after that I returned to my base to go drop off my inventory but I noticed that my sanity was quite low from the fight and after having my base burned down two times I was taking zero risk. So I spent the night of day 6 with my little lighter stood away from my base. On the morning of day 7 I went and dug up some green mushrooms for sanity as yet again I did not want to take any risk by going inside my base whilst insane. And I couldn't catch a break there because a dog attack was due. I ran past my base and luckily just had the resources on me to make a hand bat so I made a hand bat and used it against the dogs in the dog attack and the dogs didn't really stand a chance because with a hand bat, football helmet and log armour I essentially took no damage and dished out all of it. After the dog attack I returned to my base and just dropped off all the food in the fridges as well as made a bit of food and then I also dropped off my entire inventory into the chests and just neatened everything up as well as gaining a bit of sanity to make sure I didn't burn my base down. I spent the night of day 87 just collecting my twigs and grass. And on day 88 set out to go to the beehive area that I found much earlier on. Now I wanted to go into the cave and bring a lot of stuff with me so spare armor, spare weapons and a lot of food but I had to worry about two issues. One was inventory space and another one was food freshness as food will spoil within the caves and also I will not have enough inventory to carry it. But this could all be solved with one item, bundle wrap. Bundle wrap is essentially a gift wrap thing where you can put up to four items inside it and wrap it up so it only takes up one inventory space and as well it stops spoiling completely but the way to get bundle wrap was by killing bees. Now the drop chance of getting this recipe is 6% so I went to the beehive area to hopefully not spend too long farming for it and turns out that luck was on my side for that day because I ended up getting it within like the first beehive. But since I made the journey all the way here, I decided to, you know, harass the bees a bit and destroy their nests for some honey. Now I'm only joking, but we did need beeswax to make this wrapping bundle. So we get beeswax by destroying beehives and getting honeycomb. So we had to unfortunately evict some bees. And after a long day of destroying bees, I spent the night camping out in the rocky biome right next to it. Now the morning of day 89, I did something very stupid and basically I went to this area that had all of the mechanical machines and the portal that would end the game and it's filled with marble statues and I wanted just a little bit of marble to make some marble armor but in doing so lost half of my health and almost died. And after testing my luck, I decided to explore the desert area a little bit more since I haven't really ventured into it. I actually came across my first cactus. So cactus are a really good sanity food, but unfortunately my world barely spawned any cactus. And on top of that, my base was nowhere near it. So even though it is a very good sanity food, it wasn't very useful to me. And after exploring the desert area, I came across this forest biome and came across another marble statue. So that whole almost dying for marble was all for nothing. I also came across this little farm area as well as the metal potato thing and this is yet again another item needed to finish the game so, so this was actually a very lucky find as I did need this and the night time of day 89 was a full moon so I was planning on exploring but I began to freeze due to the waterlogged state that I was in since I didn't have my umbrella on me so I had to stop and build a campfire to keep myself warm. And on day 90 I returned to my base and cleaned out my inventory. I also made some healing food to heal from the marble area because that was very important to do. And on the night time of day 90 it was another full moon so I went into the swamp biome to look for some mushrooms as I needed a sanity food now to go into the caves. It was now the morning of day 91 and this whole fiasco that was happening earlier had finally ended but it left me in loads of supplies to collect so I'm not too fussy. And after that I returned to my base and for the many the time sorted out my inventory. Like I said earlier these days were just spent preparing to go into the caves so I'm pretty much doing the same thing over and over again as this is essentially what most of the gameplay of Don't Starve is. It's just always collecting resources and always making things to prepare for something and once you've done it it's a repeat. But once again in the evening and night time of day 91 I returned to the swamp biome to collect some more mushrooms. On the morning of day 92 it was beginning to turn winter again which shows like how fast the game moves as it feels like I only just survived winter. I managed to catch a winter bird and decided to let my crow friend escape because he'd done enough work for the past 50 days and I also wanted to try snowbird as the crow was giving us very bad luck and not duplicating our seeds so I thought a new bird could give it a go. However it appears our crow friend was not happy with this decision as he actually returned to the nest and basically just stared at me as if I'd done him wrong. Do you honestly think you're fucking funny? And once again, the evening and night time of day 92 was spent making food and collecting resources. It actually began to snow, so I was getting a little bit worried because you can freeze in the caves, so this would have just made the entire journey a lot harder. I started day 93 by just collecting some of my twigs next to my base. 
And due to me having so many berry bushes next to the base, this was causing turkeys to spawn inside them, so I managed to actually catch one of these turkeys and get some more meat. And for all the remainder of day 93, I spent it just cooking up some meat ready to go into the caves. I started day 94 by chopping down whatever trees I had next to my base and then continue cooking some food. In the evening of day 94, I needed some filler for my crock pot recipe, so I went to pay a beefalo a visit as they had some ice near them, and yeah, again, ice is just a really good filler because it's essentially free. And then I returned to my base and once again spent the night of day 94 cooking up some more food. It's actually depressing looking back at this footage and voicing over because something's going to happen in the caves which is gonna make all of this food cooking a bit pointless. I started day 95 making some spare football helmets and putting it into a bundling wrap and I spent the rest of day 95 collecting the final resources I need to go into the cave. Day 96 rolled around and it was another dog attack so I ran down to the rock lobsters outside of the cave and used them to help me fight off the dogs. And once again the night time of day 96 was spent by my base sorting out my inventory and essentially just getting everything I need to go into the cave. And on day 97 I decided for some reason that I needed more wood and went chopping some trees for most of the day and then returned to base and once again made some more food. Looking back at this footage I definitely over prepared. I spent so many days doing the same thing just preparing for the cave. I spent the night time of day 97 stood by my fire ready to finally set off to the caves. And the morning of day 98 I had finally entered the cave. Now as I mentioned earlier with the missing footage I spent pretty much that entire time exploring the caves so looking at the map here you can see that most of the cave is explored apart from a few areas so that is pretty much all that was missed out on that stream and the footage that was gone it's just me exploring the caves and as I said it was quite lucky footage to lose because it was a bit boring because the one I was doing was running in darkness. Now I am not exaggerating when I say I was exploring this cave for over an hour and did not find what I needed to find. So how the caves work is you go into the cave and then you're in the cave area and within that area there is another cave that you can dig out and go deeper and it's in this deeper level cave where you will find the ancient guardian boss fight. However as I said throughout this run my world was broken generated meaning that a lot of the generation hadn't generated as it was meant to. This is why there was no Gloma statue and this is why there was an island by itself. This also meant that this cave that I needed to enter did not spawn. So I spent about an hour and a half exploring every single crevice and it was not there. So instead of talking about everything I found in the cave, because I will be talking through an hour's worth of content for nothing in the end, I'm just going to quickly highlight what we found whilst trying to find this non-existent cave entrance. And pretty much straight away when entering the cave, I built a fire because I began to freeze and I actually opened up one of my bundling wraps to get some food out of it. All of the food I spent many days preparing and accidentally set it on fire and destroyed all of my food. I can rewrap it. Which one has my food in it? That's my handbag. Okay, oh, 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 oh. This meant for the next hour I was inside this cave, every single bit of food I prepared for health, sanity and hunger was now gone and I had to rely on scavenging whatever food I could find within the cave to survive and explore. So I came across these giant tentacles that were coming out of the ground and these are the similar ones to the smaller ones in the swamp. So I'm guessing they're like holding up the world or something, I'm not too sure but I didn't want to mess around with them because they can be quite aggressive if you try to attack them. Whilst underground, random earthquakes can also happen which causes your screen to shake as well as things to fall from the sky and they actually damage you if they land on you and this was a very common occurrence in the caves. I found this biome with a lot of slur tool nests which are essentially underground turtle snails. And they also came across these cracks in the floor which will spawn nightmare creatures and you actually can't kill them. This is a mechanic that is involved with the cave underneath where basically it's on a timer and these cracks will open and spawn shadow creatures to attack you. And every time I found them it gave me hope that the cave was nearby but every single time there was not. There was also these rabbit houses with these giant rabbit men underground and they were neutral unless you had meat on you because they are vegetarians. So if you were carrying any meat they were Will try and kill you. I also came across these weird cave spiders which were essentially just like the spiders in the surface but a lot harder so I didn't really want to go near them. And that's pretty much all of the cave summarized. There is meant to be so so much more to the caves when you go into the deeper level but as I said this world was broken and generated so I just couldn't access that or the ancient guardian boss fight. And looking at the map here you can see I 
thoroughly explored this cave. There was not a single part left out. So there was no way that the cave was hidden somewhere that I hadn't explored. So after a disappointing hour and a half of searching in darkness, I returned to the surface to pretty much get ready to end the game. So returning to the surface, it was now day 106 and this really does show how long I was in these caves because nine days had passed since entering the cave and when I came out, it was still winter and I had the all too familiar breathing sound in my ear. And that could only mean one thing and another Daeclops fight. Since I was disappointed that I couldn't get to the Ancient Guardian and do that as a final boss fight, I thought I would fight the Daeclops because I know he's relatively easy since I've defeated him before and I wanted to finish off the run with a boss fight. However, as mentioned before, I accidentally burned all of my food so I had nothing for sanity, nothing for hunger, nothing for health. And Daeclops has the sanity drain when fighting him. This meant I went insane very quickly and shadow creatures also began to attack me. I was also very low on hunger so I couldn't heal, I couldn't increase my sanity and I couldn't eat any food. On top of that it was also winter time so freezing was another issue. So during this fight I had to keep setting things on fire to keep myself warm as well as avoiding attacks. And during the fight my sanity hit zero and shadow creatures began attacking me. Also during the fight my hunger hit zero and I began to starve. I was very low on health at this point from taking damage from the shadow creatures, Daeclops and the cold and the hunger. So I had to run away and pretty much find whatever food and warmth I could along the way. However during this fight it appears that the bees from earlier on in the run wanted to get their revenge because a single killer bee came out of nowhere and ran in front of me during an attack causing my character to attack the bee instead of Daeclops. This threw my whole cycle off rhythm and Daeclops managed to get a hit on me and kill me. However, as I had another respawn point from earlier on in the run by making the meat effigy, I respawned next to my base and luckily I had prepared a full set of armour to wear straight away so I wasn't one shot and I had a bit of hope. But my sanity was low and you can guess what happens next. Uh, get it on. <laughs> no. Please! No, put it out! Put it out! Put out the fire! Put out the fire! Oh my god. Luckily, however, the investment in the Ice Fingermatic paid off because the Ice Fingermatic prevented my base from burning down a third time. My gear was very far away and was most likely protected by an angry Daeclops, so I couldn't return to get any of my stuff. But earlier on, Chester had died near my base. Chester? So I went to go to Chester's death point to collect the resources he had on him and luckily Chester had pretty much everything I needed to survive. This was my umbrella, some food for sanity and some food for health as well as a hand bat which is very useful for combat. It was now day 108 and I was on death's door. Everything had gone wrong and I needed to end this game before I died. So I grabbed all the things I needed to build the portal to end the game and headed to the portal area. I had one last fight I needed to get through before I could end the game by fighting these giant mechanical beasts that was protecting the portal. On top of having to deal with the rain and freezing, I was able to best all of the mechanical creatures due to the healing food I had from Chester as well as the armour and handbat. However, after defeating all of the creatures, it was now the night time of day 108 and I began to freeze, causing me to build an emergency campfire. On the morning of day 109, I built the portal finally and I was just so ready to end this run. And after saying goodbye to this cursed, not generated properly world, I stepped foot into the portal to see what would await me on the other side. So finishing the game and leaving the world gave me a lot of XP as I had survived 108 days. So this let me unlock a lot of new characters that I originally didn't have access to when starting this run. And I can assure you I am never choosing Willow again because after my base burned down that many times, I was not prepared to go through that again. But yeah, that was 100 days of surviving in Don't Starve. It ended up being a little bit over 100 days, but it doesn't really matter. It was a very cursed run because the world was not generated properly. So I ended up missing out on a lot of things such as Glomer as well as the underground Ancient Guardian boss fight. So it was never going to be a perfect run because the world itself was cursed to begin with. 
But yeah, that's the end of this Surviving 100 Days in Reign of Giants Don't Starve. Now, there are two DLCs to Single Player Don't Starve, and I do have some ideas for Surviving 100 Days in them as well. So if you did like what you see, a like and a subscribe would be highly appreciated, and hopefully I'll see you in the next world. Goodbye.